Mexican candy is just top tier. Like to me, I've tried a lot of different candies and I don't know if it's just because I grew up in San Jose, San Jose, California, but Mexican candy is like my comfort, it's my home. And it just has all of the flavors that should be in a candy. Sweet, tangy, spicy, sometimes savory. Today we're gonna to be looking at propagations. We're gonna be looking at, I originally was going to just show you five propagations that were doing really well, but then I was like, mm, let's mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you five, one, two, three. I think I have six, six propagations that did like violently well. And then um, some propagations that I'm currently working on and just kind of showing you the state that they're in. And I'm just gonna flop back and forth between the two and we're just gonna get started. The first propagation I'm gonna show you guys um, was from, I think I acquired this plant back in September, maybe beginning of September, the Dioscoria Discolor, and I will show you uh, what it looked like here. Um, I actually got a really, really long vine of it from my friend Vincent, but I wanted to share it, so I gave a cutting to Jing, I gave a cutting to Alice and I can't remember if I gave one to my mom. I should have given one to my mom. I don't think I did but um Yeah, I split it in a couple plants and I kept a three leaf cutting this one I featured on my YouTube channel when I first got it and There were some comments that were saying like oh good luck trying to root it It's not gonna root for you. You need a bulb or you need a tuber or something like you can't just grow it from a stem and that is absolutely false that is false 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 you can grow it from a stem cutting and this is proof that you can grow it from a stem cutting. So she has definitely grown a lot since then. This is one of the newest leaves to come in on it and I, I couldn't even imagine a more perfect specimen. So there's a lot happening here. Um, this thing is growing like wild. Um, there are multiple growth points that have activated and now it's just turning into an uncontrollable beast but I've got two separate stems here I think sorry I'm trying to like unwrap it hello stem number one this guy so uh, I think this was one of the first leaves to come out on it when I first grew it and it got a little bit munched and I was like please tell me that this is not a plant that needs to grow in high humidity but luckily I got a lot of feedback from you guys on YouTube and on Instagram and they were saying you can literally grow this in any kind of condition and it will love you and it's true because I'm just growing this one on my shelf and the leaves are so beautiful and delicious and dark with a couple of battle scars um, it's still looking really really cute she looks like a little snack and I'm just obsessed with this plant. This was one of my wishlist plants from last year. I didn't know how acquirable it would be because I think that these were not allowed to be imported um, from Ecuador. I think a lot of people had put it on their import list but then had to have it removed last minute because they said it wasn't allowed into Canada. I think you needed like a special kind of import license to bring it in. So yeah, that dream of mine got squished fast but luckily Vince was really really um, generous with his plant and now we all have Dioscoria discolor and this is just a plant that has been just as magical as I expected it to be just based on seeing some photos online and here's the photo that uh, convinced me that I needed this plant and I thought maybe there was a lot of, um, I'm not saying this person specifically, but in looking at the photos online, I was like, oh, it's probably a lot of filtering, a lot of photo editing, but this photo, this photo, this plant needs very, very little editing, if any. It is just beautiful. Like the contrast of the green with the burgundy, and it has this sort of sheen, which is hard to describe. You can kind of see it here, but it's like, shimmery and like it almost looks like it's wet and it's oh it's just beautiful and look at that little teeny tiny sinus it's so cute and round i think this one's my favorite leaf on it just because of how round and like beautiful it looks but then this leaf just like stunned me when i got home i just was 
like floored when I saw it and I am just letting this thing grow wherever it wants to on my shelf. I'm kind of hoping that it like attaches somewhere on the shelf so that it can sort of like vine and trail and just be wild and crazy. Uh, I did move this recently to pond and it's very dry but the roots are doing really well. Um, some of the older roots in here have dried up from like when I originally rooted it. Uh, there's some new fuzzy ones coming in here but I just water rooted this. I stuck it in water for like a month I think and it rooted pretty fast for me. Alice got a cutting from this plant and she had a little bit more trouble rooting hers but I think it's because she was working with a much smaller cutting. Um, mine was a lot longer than hers, I think. But yeah, I had no issues rooting it. There wasn't any like rot or like it, it's, it was just fairly straightforward and, and easy. Like if you were to root a pothos or something. So I am smitten with this plant. I'm gonna let it grow a bit longer and then I would love to just keep sharing this plant. It's got a lot of new leaves on the way. They start super duper tiny, like the tiniest little specks of nothing and then they just turn into these gorgeous leaves. I don't know how large these leaves can get nor do I really even care to know. I feel like I would be happy if all of them were just this size or even this size because I'm not, I'm not, my goal is to not have this like humongous thing. This really is um, a plant that I'd like to live cohesively with my other plants, not overpower it, not take over the whole shelf. Um, I will probably be trimming this thing down a lot because it does grow from wherever it wants. A lot of these auxiliary points are activated so it's yeah it's gonna be humongous in no time. And because the internodes are so long I probably will have to keep chopping this down um, often or else it's just gonna get super super long. So I'm gonna treat this like I treat my micans with regular haircuts and um, hopefully it can activate some of the auxiliary buds closer to the base so that it's bushier. I know that a lot of people have this um, climbing and it actually looks really, really cute when it's on like a trellis or something and they're all like facing forward. But for the purpose of where it is on my shelf, I think I will keep it trailing. In contrast to this one, let me show you a propagation I am currently sort of working on. Here is another variety of a Dioscoria discolor. I also got this from Vincent and I love this leaf so much. I don't know if I've ever shown this on YouTube before, but it's giving anthurium. Like it looks it's just so cute and it's got little speckles. Like if an anthurium and a Hoya were like mushed into one. So the reason why I'm showing this in contrast to the other one is because I received this one not too long after that one. And this is, this is what I've got. So again, I water rooted this, moved it to pond. Um, it is very rooty. There's like a lot of new roots coming in, but this has been the only leaf that has come out on it. And it looks like a little tiny dweeb. Um, and then it pushed out this other growth point here, which you can see has died off into a crisp. And also another one where there was another growth point that also dried up. Where are you? Oh, it already fell off. It was right here. So not, not doing like the greatest, um, but I'm not going to give up because I know how much I love this plant and I think I would love it just as much as that one once it really gets going. I think this one is just being a little bit more dramatic, but we do have one new leaf. I mean, she's not much, but it's something. So yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on this one uh, over the next few months. So another plant that has done violently well in terms of propagation is my Pseudorypsalis remulosa. Remuloso? I think it's remulosa. Um, I'll throw in a photo here of Amanda Ray Wright's um, plant. This was one of the first ones that I saw and I was just like stunned at like how pink it was. And again, I'm not a pink plant lover, but this kind of sun stress I can totally get on board with. It does put out these little tiny balls that like, I don't know what they turn into or if they turn into anything, flowers maybe, but I like it just as a little ball. And I had one before, I showed it on this channel, unfortunately it did die, but Jane gave me a second chance at love and um, it was definitely not this large when she gave it to me. I think it was maybe just this stem right here and it was like maybe up to here 
but it has grown a little bit. It dried out a lot when I let it completely dry out in perlite, which it still is in. This is the original pot she gave it to me in. Um, but I have moved it into my Redsta and it's right on, uh, right underneath my 24 watt Manios lights. And I was hoping to get some sun stress and we have arrived. So unfortunately I'm looking at the viewfinder right now and it's kind of washing it out a little bit. It looks a little bit more brownish orangish, like almost the same color. Oh, it's camouflaged. Yeah, it looks like it's the same color as my shirt, but in person it's actually like really pink and I love it. And I was kind of hoping that these leaves would sun stress pink too, but nothing has happened. But luckily there is a ton of new growth happening on this stem and I think I have a secondary growth point as well. Oh, uh, no, no, just this one. But she's definitely grown a lot more than my first cutting did. And I do think I'm going to propagate this again. I see like an opportunity right here where I can sort of take a snip, get it back in here, and I think I'm just gonna root it in this vessel. But look at these roots. It loves perlite. And I did inoculate this one with great white. Don't know if that has anything to do with it. But in general, this one is a lot more resilient than my other one, even when it does uh, dry out a bit. I think once, um, Like I was saying, I think I'm going to repot it when I'm ready to take a propagation so that I can just stick it straight in there. Um, yeah, so this is creepy. I'm gonna need to figure out how to turn these lights back on. Everyone good? Good? Okay, cool. So, um, anywho, this is the Pseudorepsalis Remulosa. I am very, very pleased with it. Currently, no little balls have formed, but we're not going to give up. It's still winter. I'm just really glad to see any kind of growth at all. Um, now, who do I want to show you next in terms of someone that's still rooting? This one is going to come as a surprise to some people, I think, but um, last year was the year I successfully sort of sized my Majestic up past this size that I was sort of stuck in for a long time and a lot of the leaves got really really big these aren't even the largest leaves um, this was just the top cutting of it so this one was on a pole it was growing really well and then it outgrew the pole and it just started reverting in size and I was too lazy to extend it or get it on a new pole so when I got home I was like okay I'm gonna handle you we're gonna get going and then I just I don't know what it was. I was like, no, I don't want to untangle these roots. I'm over it. I don't want to have to get it back on a new pole right now. So I just chopped it. And the reason that I chopped it was because the pole that it was in was in moss and that one was so dry. I was so bad at watering that pole because it was so tall and it was really hard to take it to the shower. Um, so I wasn't really babying it like I babied my Gloriosum and like other plants that I take to the shower often like my Mykins. And so it just sort of, yeah, dried up in the, in the pole and when I had gone to untangle it, they were already so dry so I didn't see the point in trying to save it. So I just chopped it and started over and now it is in water and I'm gonna try and get some roots on this baby and then I will get it straight on a pole right away once I get some roots in it. Um, but these are actually two cuttings. So one is the middle cutting and then one is, this is the top cutting right here. I'm not really worried at all in terms of trying to resize it up because I feel like the recipe for this one is just getting it on a pole and making sure that like the roots on that pole is really like healthy and nice. I know um, there are a lot of people who successfully grow Majestic without any kind of fancy pole. Um, I'm gonna out Amanda right now, but Amanda's massive, massive Majestic that she cuts I think yearly is just growing up a bamboo stick with suede string. Me and Alice make fun of her a lot because she has these massive philodendrons growing in her living room and literally they're just like sort of hanging on to the wall by like a nail and just like string and it's the stem isn't touching any kind of pole nothing and it the leaves are like as big as like an elephant's ear so um I'm not saying that you can only size up a majestic if these aerial roots are like rooted into a pole 
but um, I don't have a ton of luck with that kind of method. So for me, my sure way of being able to size up my philodendrons is making sure that it is on a pole where I can root every single um, aerial, aerial, what? Where I can root every single node and fertilize that pole. So I will try a little bit harder this year. I am feeling better now that it's back to a smaller plant. I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling very overwhelmed with it being so tall. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna start over. I'm not feeling sad about it at all. Usually when I chop plants like this, where I've tried so hard to get it to size up, I just feel all of this like guilt and just like regret not taking more time to take care of it. But I think because I feel like so many other plants in my collection are growing so well, I'm like, you know, whatever, it's gonna come back and I'm just grateful that it's alive and I'm grateful that it's still growing. So this is one sort of significant propagation that I am working on right now. So the next uh, successful propagation, we're gonna bounce back to last year. Um, I can't remember the dates, but I went to North Shore Tropicals with my parents and uh, Lauren had this massive begonia lucerna growing in her shop and it was like on this top shelf and it was just like cascading down and it was so beautiful. The leaves were like this big. I didn't even know that like the begonia leaves could get that large. And she's like, well, it needs a haircut anyway. So she gave me a cutting, she gave my mom a cutting and I think I had one leaf and my mom had one leaf. I wasn't super worried about it because I know that begonias root really fast once you get it into water right away. Um, and so yeah, I rooted it in water and now she is this big beautiful thing. Um, here's a really interesting observation of this plant. So these were some of the original leaves on it. And the first leaves that came out in my care were these really, really dark, velvety, sultry looking leaves. Like look at the color difference between this one and that one. It's, it's like two shades darker. Same with this one. These two emerged at the same time. But the leaves are so dark and I remember showing this to Lauren and she was like, oh my god, like how'd you get it so dark? And the only thing I can say was these were growing directly under a 24 watt Monios light on my living room shelf. And I remember thinking, okay, it's really close to that light. It's probably gonna burn it or sun stress it or sun stress it, bleach it, whatever. But the leaves were like super, super dark. And then the next leaves that came out had already sort of escaped from under my shelf because it was getting too tall. And so this one was just grown in sort of like ambient light, like diffused light, whatever it gets from my living room. All of these leaves up at the top and they're like that regular green color again. So the only difference between this leaf and this leaf is the light. And I, I don't know, it kind of surprised me at how dark it was. And then even look at the abaxials. It's like a totally different plant. All of these have sort of like that faded red color, but this one has stayed like a really, really deep burgundy. Sorry, it's kind of hard to show this guy. He's like hidden, but this one is like super duper burgundy and it hasn't faded or anything. So I don't know. I mean, I do prefer this over this color, but I'm not really too stressed about trying to get it under like that perfect lighting so that um, I can have dark leaves like this, only because this plant grows so violently fast that I wouldn't be able to keep up with it anyway. Um, I do think I'm gonna chop this soon, although I am sort of intrigued to try and grow it like Lauren, where she did have it on a tall shelf and eventually she just let it sort of cascade over. But I think that she warned me that um, hers either I think she said it might have like tipped over or it like snapped or something. One of her stems snapped, but this thing is like a piece of bamboo. Look at how thick this stem is. She's huge. I just don't really see this thing snapping anytime soon. So I guess we'll see. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm not going to do any chopping, um, but I am happy with like how large these leaves have remained. I kind of thought that once it was chopped, it was going to like go back to like the really small begonia leaf, but it has stayed really large and I just love this thing so much. And now switching gears again, going to a plant that I'm currently rooting. 
Um, this is the Philodendron Sherberichii. Sherberichii. Jing had told me that she had some difficulty rooting this plant, so I was a little worried. I didn't want to lose these leaves because they are just, they're so like, like unreal. They're, I can't, sometimes I like look at this and I'm like, what are you doing in my house? Um, but I did not really have an issue rooting it. Water is like my tried and, tried, tried and true, what's the word? Tried and true? Water is my go-to. It's a method that I will continue to um, support, I will continue to do, despite some people saying that you grow like inferior or subpar roots um, when you water root, but that has not been the case for me. A lot of my large, healthy plants in my collection have originally been water rooted. It's still my preferred method of rooting just because I find it to be a lot faster. Um, so yeah, this one didn't seem to mind it. I didn't even need to get like a bubbler in it or anything and she is doing really great. So I've got two roots here. They look really nice and fuzzy and then this uh, aerial root here is pushing out some um, secondary roots, which is great. I don't want these water roots to get too long though, so I think sometime next week I will be moving this to the choose upon. But the good news is, like since the chop, since Erin chopped it for me, um, these leaves have not yellowed at all. They just are completely stuck in time. They were not phased at all by moving out of her tent again being chopped and um, she's just, yeah, she's a trooper. This caterpillar is getting a little bit big and I think that something is gonna come out of it soon. I do plan on getting this one on a pole as soon as I repot it because I don't wanna fuck around. I don't want this to revert in size. I'd love to keep the size going, but you know, you never really know when you have a plant that has been newly chopped. So we're just gonna keep tooting along here. Next plant that has uh, propagated very, very successfully is my Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost. If you have been here a while, you know that I had one before. It was a single leaf for what felt like ages until it finally died off. It was very sad. Jing gave me a second chance. She cut me a slightly larger cutting this time. It was a two leaf cutting, with two leaves on the way. Um, so I was given a really good start. Um, she had propagated it in perlite for me. I got this second cutting in August and it has just done so well since then. It's definitely been like a night and day difference between my first cutting and this one and I'm just so grateful that I finally have one that is like wanting to live for me and just like constantly pushing out new growth. My little New Guinea tree is just turning into this majestic little angel and I could not be happier. It, this trellis situation is a little weird. So I've got this one runner here where all of these leaves are from and it was just like all the way over there and I couldn't stand it. So I trellised it as best as I could, still trying to keep that runner upward so that it didn't die. And so far so good. A second growth point has activated here and I can see two, four, six leaves on the way and um, another growth point activated down here so we've got these two little tiny guys that have just emerged maybe a few days ago but this plant is doing so well um jing oh there's another leaf here oh my god it's so cute um jing had told me that this was one of her most unruly fastest growing hoyas probably should have switched chairs, but she told me that this was just a Hoya that just grows out of control. And again, that was not my experience the first time, but I can definitely see what she's saying um, with this second time around because to go from two leaves to this in just a matter of months, I find to be pretty impressive for a Hoya. And it is growing in no drainage. These roots are amazing. Um, I did notice sort of like an influx of new uh, roots once I inoculated it. I used TPS Billions for this one and um, she's just growing like a freaking dream. I love her so much. Uh, this is a plant that I would love to share as well. So once it grows a little bit more, I think I'll like maybe chop away at one of these runners or maybe this guy here and share it. Yeah, just really, really grateful to have had success the second time around because I told her and I told myself that if this didn't work this time around, I wasn't gonna try again because I felt really bad for killing it the first time and then I would feel bad for killing it the second time when it could have stayed with her or gone to someone else that could have grown it better than me. So 
Um, the plant gods were with me this time and I am definitely not taking it for granted. Switching gears again, uh, current propagation is this Anthurium Wenlingeri that I got from Amanda and I struggled so much with this one. I've had this for a really long time and this is the first root that I've had on it and it didn't start, it only started growing right when I left. So when I left, it was about this big. It was actually um, Alice who noticed it first. Uh, I had it in my tent. There was a, I've always had a bubbler with this one and I was a little scared that the stem was really small. It had rotted a little bit so I had to like scrape away all the rot and I was just really nervous. So I did want to sort of give it VIP treatment, gave it a bubbler and clearly it worked out well. But yeah, she was in there. I was like, oh, the fucking when linger I won't root. And then she like looks at it closer. She's like, um, there's a root. And I think we both like screamed together. And now it's like this big long thing. So here's the thing though. I actually successfully rooted this before, like when I first got it, there was already this tiny little root coming in when it was shipped to me and um, I brought it home, I moved it to Passive Hydro, the root kept growing, and then one day it just all turned to mush for no reason at all, and so I had to start over, I chopped off that root, and this is the second try now, so even though I'm happy, I'm not completely like relieved or I'm not feeling like I'm in the clear yet, I feel like I still have a long way to go and I'm still a little bit nervous about moving this out of water, but it's gotta happen. I don't wanna grow this water. I don't wanna grow this water. I don't wanna grow this in water indefinitely. Um, but I also have a new leaf on the way. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's just starting to emerge from this caterpillar. So the potting situation is also really difficult because I don't wanna bury the new growth point since it's so small. So I think anyway, I'll wait until this new leaf fully hardens off to like do anything to it. But for now, it's living in water, doing okay and we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed. The next um, successful propagation is my Anthurium XD Pulatum, and I originally wasn't going to um, include this in this video because it's not like the other plants that I've shown you where it has like really glowed up a lot, but I will say that if I had to pick one plant from 2022 that was like one of my hardest rooters, I'm gonna say it's the XD Pulatum. That one was just frozen in time since the day that it came into my house. Not a single new root had grown, no new leaves, nothing. Um, it was basically just a very, very steady decline until it eventually just turned to a stump. So I chopped up the stump into four pieces and this is the result of that um, chop can't tell if my camera's focusing. So um, the reason that I'm including this in this video is because I'm just so happy to see something. I'm so happy to see a leaf. Um, I'm happy to see any kind of life because I was so sure that once I chopped it, that was gonna be the end of it for us. I wasn't gonna have one anymore. But actually all four of them have rooted. This is the only one that has pushed out a growth point and I think that's because this was the top cutting if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember, but I'm just like so happy to see a leaf. And I don't know if this is gonna be one of those anthuriums that give me grief that kind of need higher humidity, but I'm telling you it hated living on this shelf. And I do think that um, once it gets a little bit bigger, maybe the second leaf, I will move it onto my living room shelf. I'm sort of wondering if the lower temperatures will um, treat this one a little bit better. But yeah, I just had to include it. It's a little braggy moment for me because I just did not have luck with this. And I think, I can't remember, I don't know if Alice still has hers or if Jing still has hers, but I think all of us that acquired one of these during the Equigenera show have struggled with it. And I actually read some threads on a Facebook group saying, or like talking about how a lot of people struggled with this plant. So. Just because I rooted it and grew a leaf doesn't mean we're in the clear. I'm not saying I'm like a freaking XD Pilatum god, but I am proud to see a leaf. I'm just happy that we have something and uh, just hopefully I can keep this going. This next one is a little bit more painful to look at. I think I featured it like this in this state in my uh, last video that went up. Not my last video, but my last video of 2022, the awards video. Ugh. 
And yeah, I explained why this plant looks like that in that video, so I'm not going to go through it again. But um, we definitely have lots of roots, so I'm very excited about that. This one can, well, it should have been moved to Passive Hydro a long time ago. Typically, I don't like the water roots to be this long before I move it because I find that they're a bit more sensitive in the transition, especially if you're going to move it to something like soil. It's not impossible at all. It can 100% be done, but I have found in my experience it requires a little bit more monitoring. Um, you have to be really careful with like sort of how wet you're keeping that soil. Um, you have to get the, like the the ratios right in terms of soil to amendments. So for me, I will only water root if I'm moving something to a pond or LECA. But if I'm going to move something to soil, I prefer doing a perlite prop. A tree fern fiber prop or a um, moss propagation. All that to say, um, these roots are a bit longer than I'd like them to be, but I am going to move it pretty soon. I think next week will be my big repotting week. And yeah, we're just going to get her set. I'm going to get her on a pole and hopefully we can get her looking back to her former glory. This is the last leaf that came in. It's a little stunted, a little small, but still really, really cute. I have faith that this one is going to be just fine. I said that when I chopped it. And even though I lost a lot of leaves, I think I lost... I gave my mom like a quarter of the plant. I have one leaf in my grow tent that I'm propagating. And then I think on this propagation, I lost maybe four leaves. Maybe even five. So um, there has been some casualties, but I have zero regrets. I did give my mom um, a piece of this uh, plant and she was so happy and nothing can replace that. Um, I will cut any plant for my mom no matter the risk so still no regrets and we will be just fine. The last two are more honorable mentions. These ones are successful propagations that I've had recently um, and the first one is not the first one but the second to last one are my alocasia fried at corms. There is, there are two corms missing. I gave one to my aunt and then I gave one to my mom and I was going to sell these in the States, but for one, I was too lazy and two, I, I was a little bit attached to them and I think I'm gonna end up keeping them. I'm just gonna have to work a little bit harder to pay off my credit card from Christmas because these are supposed to help me pay those down, but um, as usual, I get attached. So these ones will be staying with me and it's fine because I can kind of show you guys the uh, the growth of them and I can get both of these into a totally different substrate and we can experiment which one is better. But I just felt like I had to show this because they have been growing so well and I was surprised that all of the corms that I harvested from my mother plant were variegated and they actually have really, really pretty variegation. So. The one that I gave my mom and the one that I gave my aunt had the nicest variegation on it. Not that, not to say that these don't have nice variegation, but those ones were a little bit more stable in the green ratio with the white. So my mom has another fry deck, which um, I will show you in another video coming up soon. That one is living on the edge a little bit. She's a little bit of a wild child and she just puts on, she puts out these like white leaves, white leaves, white leaves and then they die. So I wanted to give my mom a backup plant. So I did give her one that still had a lot of variegation but still had a good amount of green. And then same with my aunt. I didn't want to stress her out with one that was like highly variegated. I wanted to make sure she still had a balance so she wasn't so worried about like the browning on the really white leaves. And then I just kept these two for myself. So. Um, yeah, those are those two, and then for the final one is my Philodendron Felix. Along with my Wendy, I just, ugh, I could not root this one to save my life. I was, I struggled so much. Um, I almost gave up, but this one actually rooted for me eventually. There are two growth points. I'm not 100% certain that that other one is going to emerge from the substrate because it's a little bit lower, but I wanted to at least get one of the growth points out of the substrate. So there's this guy that was a little bit bigger, but look at how stinking cute that little Felix leaf is. I can't. So again, another plant that I'm really excited to see grow in my care from a little teeny tiny baby. It'll be fun to look back at these videos and the photos I take of it to show like how far it's come. But fingers crossed I can keep it alive, but for now it's doing doing pretty okay and she's also living... Actually this one is in my tent still because I'm 
still bab babying this one a little bit, but um, yeah, this is one that I am very, very happy to see roots on. <sighs> and that's it. I'm not framed in the center. Oh, that's gonna bother me when I'm editing. So um, that was it, you guys, and that was a fun one to like look back and appreciate the propagations that I've done well. Um, I'm hoping to do more videos like this this year because I do need to um, document my propagations more on video so that I have more things to show you when I do update videos and I do sort of like recap videos d during the end of the year. So lots of that to come this year. One more thing that I want to touch on before I go, and I promise I am not going to be shoving this down your throats all the time. I just wanted to do it since this is like the launch week for me, but I started a second vlog channel. Um, this was at the suggestion of a lot of people who wanted to see some non-plant videos and I mentioned this in my video that went up on Wednesday. I didn't want to spam this channel with non-plant things because I know the majority of you here just want to see plant stuff and I respect that and I don't want to make you feel like you subscribed and got like swindled into a channel that wasn't what you thought it was going to be. So I started a second channel and I am not going to be uploading on there as regularly as here. This is still my main priority. I think it will always be my main priority and that one is going to come second and I'll upload whenever I feel like I have something that I want to upload and I actually have the time and like the energy to do it. But my first video went up yesterday, so if you guys need something to watch after this video, um, maybe give that one a watch. Uh, if you want to subscribe, I have linked it in the description of this video. So I hope to see some of you guys there. It would be so comforting to see some familiar faces and familiar names because I am really, really terrified of putting this uh, second channel out, uh, but no pressure, obviously. So just all that to say, regular programming on this channel, nothing is gonna change because of this second channel. So yeah, I'm out of breath now. So I'm gonna go. Thank you guys so much for watching another video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it because it helps us a lot on YouTube. And uh, honestly, I am kind of open this year in terms of my video planning i don't really have anything set in the schedule for like the weeks to come so i'm kind of open if you guys have any ideas of what you'd like to see all your suggestions would be welcomed um because i have no clue what i'm doing so um yeah leave those in the comments or dm me or email me i don't know call me beat me if you want to reach me however you want to do it um yeah that would be greatly appreciated so anyway i'm gonna go i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next one